everybody. Welcome back to our channel. If you are joining us for the first time today, Subup will be going live Tuesday and Friday at 9.30 a.m. PST. During this time, we want to make sure that we are here for you as much as possible and are constantly trying new ways to support your needs. In today's episode, we are joined by three other Paragon staff members who are looking forward to meet you all. Like we mentioned in our previous episode, we are trying something new today. Um, we wanted to share some, some of the fun ways that you can develop your English proficiency. I know that many of you are working really hard towards your subject test, and so this is an episode to help you take a small break during this, the weekend. Um, now, it is important to remember that our suggestions today are by no means a part of your actual preparation, but I have received many questions from test takers on social media who want to know how they can improve their general grasp of the English language even after the test. Whether it's a workplace conversation or just day-to-day -day interactions, there is no harm in trying these suggestions because you will definitely have fun while you're trying to learn. And again, this is an experimental video, um, so do give us a thumbs up if you like it. And again, let us know in the comments if you want to see similar content. Don't worry, we will be back to sharing important self test content on Tuesday with Brandy and Megan. So you can definitely tune in for that on the 28th uh, and you will be able to see Brandy and Megan again. In the previous episode, we had Brandy and Megan join us to share valuable tips on how to manage your time before and during the self book test. Uh, for those of you who will be testing in the near future, this episode, uh, you can see it play, playing here, which is very helpful for you. And as always, I will link it in the description below. So please check it out after this session. Uh, it's time now to go to our news updates. So as you all know, we are adding more test dates in Vancouver. Uh, things are changing as we speak. So as long as we have the opportunity to test, we will make sure we use it well. Um, usually tested over the weekends, as you already know, but we're also opening new test settings uh, and test dates. Um, and more than ever, it's now really important for you to enter your email ID in the notification bar on our website. But please make sure you enter it in your city page. Uh, when you do that, you will be able to get updates directly about the city or the center, uh, test center that you are interested in. Um, if you see the image in, in the screen, you will see that there is a notification bar where you can enter your email. And don't worry, if you have already entered your email in the general page uh, on our SAPA website, you can always go incognito mode and repeat the procedure I just showed you. Great. Um, and for those of you who will be testing this week, I want to reassure you that we are doing everything we can to make sure that you have a safe testing experience. Um, we again have a video detailing the steps we are taking. Um, you can see it here. I will link it down below. But in the screen now, you can see the four important steps that we are taking to help you uh, stay safe during your test. We will be maintaining physical distancing uh, when we're checking your ID and in the initial waiting. We'll also be maintaining, we'll also be cleaning your uh, lab before and after the test. We will again be maintaining safety, uh, physical distancing procedures and most importantly, we are encouraging you to wear your mask, your personal mask, uh, and bring it with you during the test. If you want to know, uh, if you want to watch the video full, there is always a link below in the description for you. Please check it out, and I want to reassure you that Paragon is doing everything we can to make sure that your test is safe. Lastly, if you're not comfortable testing, you can transfer your test for free in just three steps. Um, I will go over the steps with you like I do always. First, sign into your self of account. Uh, second, under the heading, sorry, under the heading upcoming test, click actions, and then click transfer to a different sitting. You will then be able to transfer your test to your preferred date, time, and location. Follow all prompted steps and click place order to complete the transfer. As always, the transfer is free, so you do not have to be worried about being charged for anything. Okay, lastly, 
If you are not comfortable testing, um, like I said, you can always transfer your test, but you also have uh, some prep available for you. Our practice test is now 25% off, and this is available only until April 30th, so I urge you to make use of this as soon as you can. Uh, the link to that is in the description below as well. Uh, during this time, we also thought that it would be good to share with you some of our test taker stories. Um, one of the test takers that we spoke to earlier, Vidor, um, has helped us make a video of uh, uh, him telling his subject story, and I will show you a sneak peek here. We're originally from, from Rio, in Brazil. Brazil. Uh, I came, came to Vancouver to study English for a little bit. bit. I was like, yeah, yeah definitely, definitely want to come, come back and meet here one day. Two years later, I had the opportunity to come back, back and I got like, all my stuff, stuff moved here. here. Before, Before coming here, here, I would be afraid of things like the weather, like how intense that would be for me, for someone who comes from a tropical country, where you're just being far from family, you know that I wouldn't be able to visit all the time, see two weeks about making friends, getting to know people, you just gotta push yourself, where you otherwise never know. Actually, I have a sign in my place right now. Okay, so I hope you like that. And if you are curious to know Vidor's full story, we'll be updating that video along with the other videos you have seen before of our self test takers. So do check that out on our YouTube channel. Great, now that concludes our news updates. So let's go ahead and have some fun. Okay, I know I've said this many times that we are trying something different today, but no matter what the results are, I'm personally excited about it because I actually get to talk to you. Usually I'm just repeating your questions or uh, listening to our experts and understanding their expertise, but today I actually get to share my ideas and suggestions with you all and also hear from you. So I am very much looking forward to this segment. Today, uh, as I mentioned before, we have three other employees and my friends while joining us here to play a game with you. Uh, let me show you what we have planned. We have four topics to talk about today, TV shows, uh, games, books, and podcasts, and we're sharing our picks on each of these suggestions to help you have fun while also developing your English skills. Um, and to make this activity a little bit more fun, we added a spin wheel. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get a real wheel uh, at this time, so we had to get a digital one for you. Um, you can see it on the screen here. It is not moving at the moment, but when we start the segment, it will pick a topic for us, books, TV games, a TV games or podcasts, and we will give you suggestions based on that. If you did not understand what I'm talking about, please ask your questions in the comments, and I will make sure that I help you all. But for now, I'm really, really excited to start this game. Let me introduce you to our guest today. Um, we have Annabella from the Business Development. Hi, Annabella. How are you? Hi, Swathi. It's really nice to be here. This is the first time doing something like this, so I'm excited to start. <laughs> we are excited to have you as well. Um, and then we also have Lauren from Marketing. Some of you might recognize her from our first ever self live episode. Hi, Lauren. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good this morning. I'm excited to get started play this game. Sounds great. Um, and we also have Anna uh, from Marketing here today. Hi, Anna. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good, it's a nice day today here in Vancouver. Oh, that's, it's actually really cold here, so <laughs> I'm not sure which which area of Vancouver you're in, <laughs> but it's good that you're having a nice day. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, great. So like I said, they are already my friends, so I already know how, how, how they're doing. This is just for you. Anyway, so now that you've got to know all of them, let's start with, Round one. So it looks like our first pick is TV shows. I'm going to let uh, somebody else start. So Lauren, would you like to start? 
put yours yeah, down. Yeah, sure. Um, the first TV show that comes to mind is Friends. Um, it's a pretty basic choice, but I think uh, Friends is just a classic sitcom. It's super funny. Um, it's probably really good for learning English because they just get up to so many different crazy scenarios that you're going to end up learning English for all different types of situations that you can't even expect. Um, they just get up to a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, I know that Friends is a popular choice um, because I watched it when I was uh, younger. Uh, but Annabella, you had also some experience working with Friends uh, in general when, as your, when your time as a teacher. Right. Um, I have <laughs> always been using Friends as an ESL teacher for now over 20 years. Yes, uh, Friends has actually been one of the best uh, episodes or series to use for ESL classes and it's wonderful to see sort of the dynamics of these people and many people already know about friends because you can see it in different languages but this gives you the opportunity to practice the English to know a little bit more about the culture and it's it's actually fun to watch and as an instructor usually for students I would always tell them to describe the pictures and see what they're doing tell us what they're going to do next. So I'm always in a teacher mode every time I'm watching these uh, shows. <laughs> That's an interesting outlook. Maybe next time I watch it, I will try seeing it from your point of view. Um, Anna, did you have a TV show that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, uh, actually, Brent is also one of my favorite uh, sitcoms. And I would like to recommend another sitcom. Uh, the name's How I Met Your Mother. The reason why I highly recommend it is because, like, for all the sitcoms, they run relatively shorter. So each episode is about, like, 20 minutes, 22 minutes each. So you can just easily finish one episode during a uh, break. And also, it's very, it's good to learn English because I am an English learner. English is my second language. And I find watching uh, sitcoms like Power Metal Mother or Friends, you can actually learn more than just uh, the wording. You can learn about the culture. So actually, I learned uh, North American culture when I watch How, How I Met Your Mother and Friends. So that's why I rec highly recommend those two shows. Yeah. Great. So uh, I know that we already spoke to Lauren, but I wanted to know, Lauren, what you personally think uh, how Friends helps uh, people with English, if you had anything that you'd like to share. Yeah, I think um, just like what's already been said, the fact that there's so many different situations that you get to learn kind of um, English in the context of different cultural situations um, and perhaps maybe like different than learning it from a textbook where it might be more like vocabulary based um, you're going to learn it um, based on what people do every day like being at a coffee shop or going out with, with friends um, going to see a movie like all that kind of stuff that you're going to end up doing day to day anyways That is an excellent segue into my suggestion which is Pox and Rec. Uh, which is Parks and Recreation. Um, and it is my favorite show. It is a mockumentary-style show, similar to The Office. Um, and I was having a conversation earlier with a friend about Office versus, Park versus Parks and Rec. And for me, I find Parks and Rec a little better because it's, uh, the way it's done, it's, it's less... I deal with a lot of, like, secondhand embarrassment. So for me, Office gets a little too embarrassing at times. And Parks and Rec is so much better in the way that you know, whenever there is an assumed awkwardness, it immediately goes away. Um, but for for the terms of English, I feel like Parks and Rec is a set of setting, it's an office setting, so you get to really understand how people converse. I mean, a lot of these are dialogues of like com comical dialogues, but it still helps to like. And because it's a government setting, you get to see a lot of official situations where people are extremely serious and are trying to like uh, speak professionally and formally. It's a good episode, in my opinion, and there's also like diverse casts. So sometimes you do get to pick, like, you get to see like people talking in different accents and how other people cope with that. Um, so I would encourage you to watch that. It's also a good uh, exploration of how the government works in general um, in a specific country that I don't want to specify right now. Um, okay, so I think we spoke about a good number of examples now. Uh, we can go and see what the spin wheel has for us for the round two.
Okay, so it looks like we're talking about books. Uh, again, I'm going to let somebody else start. Annabella, would you like to start with your suggestion? Sure. <laughs> well, books in general, I think, are important for anybody, especially if you want to practice your vocabulary or learn something new. But most importantly, if you are reading a book, whichever, even the ones that we recommend or other books, it's always better to choose something that you do enjoy. So in my case, I love fantasy. So my, my uh, suggestion here would be Harry Potter. I know that there are many series in this book, in, the, in this um, storyline. So there's actually seven books for the series, but it's quite engaging. It's definitely a page turner. And I myself have read all the books. And I do believe that the English here is more straightforward and the storyline is quite interesting. So it allows you to travel to another world or dimension, and it's fun to read as well. Sounds great. I am a big Harry Potter fan, so I agree to everything you said. I think you just read it in general for just having a really good time. Um, Lauren, did you have a suggestion? Um, yeah, I do. I have to start off by saying I am also a big Harry Potter fan. I feel like there's a lot of us at Paragon that love Harry Potter. Um, and the book that I chose is actually a nonfiction book, which is a little more boring, uh, but I've been getting more into nonfiction. I actually brought it with me. I brought a few books, but, um, the book that I am interested in reading is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And it's very interesting because it just breaks down, um, different stories of successful people in the world and why they became successful. Um, often we think that maybe you become successful by just working super hard, or maybe some people become successful because they were just super lucky. And this book looks at all the different angles and uh, breaks down different stories of some of the most successful people in the world, like famous hockey players, the Beatles, um, Steve Jobs. And it's a pretty quick and simple read, but I found it quite life-changing to think more critically about how success happens in our lives. Interesting. Uh, sounds like a book that I have to read as soon as possible. Did you um, have an idea of how this will help people with their English, English development, language yeah. development? Yeah. Um, I think, again, it's really important when learning English to think beyond just expanding your vocabulary and think about um, kind of learning context and Something that's really good about this is it breaks down all these different stories of successful people, but it also gives you a bit of insight into important moments in history, important people and figures um, that might come up in conversations a lot anyways, uh, a lot of uh, really big moments. And so that just adds to your ability to engage in different types of conversations in English. Oh, sounds great. Um, okay, I am really excited. Uh, I love reading books, so um, I know that many people have different interests, like people like games, people like TV shows, mine is books. So this conversation is really important to me because I'm picking up all the important books. So let's see what Anna has for us. Hey. So Hi, my uh, recommendation would be Anne of Green Gables. Uh, not because of the name, you know, has an inside. <laughs> Mostly because it's a Canadian classic. It's, uh, it's written and set in Canada by a Canadian writer. So I know some people may say that, oh, Anne of Green Gables, that's like, a, that's a kid's book. That's a children's novel. But uh, I do feel like that as an English learner, sometimes it's really tricky to actually finish a whole book because I have been there, so I know. But by reading something more uh, straightforward and more... Uh, like age friendly I do feel like it's easier for me to finish a book and that's a classic so I wouldn't say that oh that's too easy for anyone it's always a good read and any reading is good reading so I highly suggest Anne of Green Gable it's a amazing book written by amazing women about the growth and humankind so it's definitely a good read sounds good uh, so Anna brought up classic reads which is a good uh Thing because I was going to talk about Agatha Christie novels, which are my favorite novels in the world. I 
think that I credit most of my knowledge in English language to Agatha Christie novels because you really have to follow the the storyline to understand what happened in the end. So Agatha Christie novels are mostly like murder mysteries. Uh, it's always about who is the murderer, where what happened to the victim, and how the murder happened. So um, and these books are a little like they're a little long. So you have when you start from beginning to the end, everything that you read is some way or the other going to be playing a bigger role towards the end. So for me, I had to really pay attention. So and really paying attention means like looking at big words and figuring out what language what it means. And again, it's it's Agatha Christie and it's and it's British. So there's a lot of big words. Um, it helps you with your vocabulary, but it also helps you when you continue reading these books. You kind of pick up keywords. You find out that oh, I know that this looks important um, because I've read these books before, and I know that this is going to play into something more important towards the end. And I feel like that really helps you in general reading as well. When you go through a paragraph, you get to find out what what the paragraph is kind of talking about and what you think would be important keywords. So that's why that is my pick. And um, like I mentioned, it's a little heavy. So I would suggest starting with like the collection of short, short stories that she has. Um, that way you can start small and then get go to the more serious uh, collections of hers. Great. I am very excited about all these um, examples. We can now go to round three and see what the wheel is asking us. Okay, games. Yay. Okay, guys, I am going to start because I'm not the best person at games, but I do have one example, which is not the, like, if you see the other examples that are there today, you're going to, like, look at my example and be like, uh, so I just want to start mine, and then we can go to the better examples. Mine is Taboo, which is a board game. So if you haven't played Taboo, it's essentially a game where you are given a word that people around you have to guess, but you can't use that word. For example, if you get shoes, you can't use the word shoes and you have to let other people know that the word you have is shoes. So this this game is really good for you to paraphrase. You get to like think of sentences where you describe shoes without not really describing shoes. It's also a good way to pick up synonyms um, because, you know, maybe shoes don't have synonyms, they do footwear. Uh, but you have a lot of other words that are more complicated and you're always guessing and thinking because there's a time limit. You're thinking on your feet about the words you can come up with and the synonyms you can think of. So again, this really helps with like improving your vocabulary and then general paraphrasing, which is an important tool when it comes to writing. So that's why I picked Taboo. Um, I am going to let uh, other people talk about their games, but do remember Taboo. Uh, it's a board game and you can't play with your friends at oh, this situation that, that we are in, in COVID-19 uh, situation. It's a good game to play virtually as well. Okay, um, Lauren, did you have a game suggestion? I do have a game suggestion, and I am a big nerd, um, like just the biggest nerd. So I often play Dungeons and Dragons, but what I like to do when it comes to games is I play a video game called Skyrim, and Skyrim is uh, what you call an RPG game, which stands for role playing game which essentially means that you're just roaming around in a very kind of open world. You can make any decisions you want in the video game. There's so many different ways you can end up playing it. And it also means that you end up spending just hours and hours of your life <laughs> being sucked into uh, playing this game. But it's so much fun. Um, it's set in kind of a like medieval fantasy uh, scenario with a bit of kind of Viking lore as well. And I think it's really fun to play RPG video games because, uh, and to learn English that way because you do end up having to speak to a lot of characters, listen to a lot of characters, um, give you kind of quests, and, and it requires a lot of interaction in the world, and you end up do reading a lot of text. So it's a fun way to relax but also learn a lot of English. Sounds good. Did you say that it was an Xbox or a Nintendo game? I don't know. Skyrim is on every platform. I 
like if you play video games, you've probably heard of this. It's just a class game. I have it on the Switch right now. <laughs> and I've also played it on Xbox. And you can even play it on your computer as well. Um, it's on every possible device. Interesting. Maybe when I do get an act for playing video games, I will start with Skyrim. Um, before we move on to the next uh, suggestion, one of you have suggested a really interesting book that I'd like to know more about. Um, it's called A Woman's Fortune. It. I don't know um, what it is about. So if you thank you for commenting, um, but if you give me a small synopsis, maybe I can talk about it um, in this episode. Um, okay, moving on to the next game suggestion, Annabella. What did you have for us today? Well, I'm more of a board game person, so when you mentioned Taboo, I was already excited because I love playing Taboo with my students because this is, it actually helps them think in English, so it was a very dynamic game, but the one I'm, I'm actually going to talk about is the Pictionary, which is another very fun and motivating game for, for people to play. And it's quite simple. I mean, there's uh, two teams and one person has to draw for the other team. And they basically have three minutes to guess the drawing. And they cannot use words or symbols or hand gestures. So it's a good way to increase their vocabulary. Plus, it's a lot of fun and you'll get a lot of laughs out of it. And you don't need to be an artist either to play this game. But uh, one of the best things about this is it's not just a board game. They have, I mean, depending on the vocabulary that you have, they have Junior Pictionary and then they have an app called Pictionary Air. So you just draw in the air and people can see the images that you're drawing. And it's a whole lot of fun. So highly recommended for that one. Drawing in the air. I know you mentioned that this you don't require art skills, but in my experience, having played Pictionary, my art skills have been questioned a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, yes, I see how Pictionary can help with English because it has helped, with, helped me with mine. But I'm worried about the art skills, especially if we're drawing in the air, like well, you just mentioned. I myself, is I just draw stick figures. So, I mean, I, I don't mind. But as long as they can try to interpret what you're drawing, it's usually a, a lot of laughs out of people. So. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm pretty sure uh, you guys have played Tabo Pictionary and Skyrim. So if you have, just let us know in the <laughs> comments below if you enjoyed it or what you think uh, it helped you with, if it did help you with English. Okay, so that's uh, our games round. Let's see what we have for the next round. Uh, and I'm sorry if we're dealing, uh, we're dealing with some technical difficulties. Like I said, this is a new experiment for us. So we apologize for the technical difficulties, but we shall move on like we always do. Okay, great. Our next round is books again. Yay! My favorite section. Okay, so I'm gonna again start with someone else this time because I have a good example this time. Okay. So, Anna, what examples do you have for us? Yeah, so, the second book uh, I'm recommending is the book called The Bone Collector's Son. It's a historical novel set in Vancouver's uh, 1907 Chinatown. And I, I feel like learning about early Chinese Canadian life by leaving the stories of the pioneers is a really good way to learn about Canadian history from another angle. And also, this book is good for children and adults. So, I highly recommend this one. Oh, I heard that it's, um, I, maybe you explained it now, I was looking at the comments, but you, did you mention that it was about immigrants in Canada? Yes, so uh, this, this book, uh, the setting is happening in 1907, so like really, really early, when the first generation of Chinese immigrants came to Canada. Some of, the, some of them, they need to work like outside of normal like labor works to make a living. So in this book, it talks about the boy and uh, follow his dad, they actually dig bones into in the grave, you know, and then they wash it and clean and send back to the uh, dead per, dead people's family. So it's kind of a uh, it's a very interesting story, but it's not very scary per se okay. because it's good for adults and children, right? So I highly recommend if you are interested in this story. That sounds good. It's also a good way to understand the immigrant situation at that time. So that's a great example. Um, 
my example is no surprise is another detective story uh, series it's called the murdoch uh, detective murdoch series there is also a tv show called murdoch mysteries which i was going to suggest for tv shows but i think that it, it it's on netflix but i think that it's only for canadian netflix i'm not sure if it's available everywhere so i picked the books instead um it's written by morin jennings and it's about victorian era toronto so it's a very good way to like understand uh victorian era toronto it also talks about like um did you guys know that newfoundland was part of britain i had no idea so this book like has shown me all these information um and they also kind of bring in like really uh, historical figures they bring in nikola tesla they bring in einstein and obviously the plot is not real like i don't think einstein was in toronto talking to murdoch who is the lead detective in this book but it's just a really nice way to like understand um about a little more about these historical figures actually one of the books that anna mentioned and of green gables the author um mary mod sorry i got uh, for, i forgot her name but she actually comes in murdoch mysteries as a character so that's how i found out about the book and that's how i found out about that she is an amazing author so i would recommend the series because it also has a mix of like uh the conversations that they have uh, also talk a lot about like uh canada versus britain versus other countries and like development that was happening during that time uh a lot of like scientific innovations were happening and the conversation around that is very uh, heightened like there's a lot of scientific words there's a lot of uh words that are invented the first time there so i would uh, i would highly recommend you reading that it's a very easy read not like agatha christie which is a little more in detail uh but i do encourage you to check it out um i'm going to see what Annabella has for us. Well, I think your recommendation was great because I do love murder mysteries and I've read a lot of novels on that as well. But the one I I wanted to suggest is actually a a book that probably people didn't know it was a book because it's also on Netflix on Netflix and it's 13 Reasons Why. So, I know that there have been a lot of people that have seen the series already. and uh the book actually takes uh is pretty much talking about the present day lifestyle so it does deal with a lot of heavy issues like suicide and uh bullying but the way the writer writes the book is fairly simple the grammar is actually quite simple and easy to understand there are short and uh the book vocab- the, the short essays and the vocabulary is simple so the grammar is pretty easy to understand i mean like again i'm thinking like a teacher here but <laughs> it's great for esl learners and i i would recommend it because i mean it, it's something a bit more to what we're dealing with in in daily life so it's it's quite interesting to see that in in the book as well and i do prefer books to tv shows uh i mean or Like, yeah, me too. <laughs> like Harry Potter is a great example. Yeah, not saying, exactly. Not saying the TV uh, the movie was bad, but in my head I was imagining much larger creatures and much scarier creatures. So thank you for that. Like you said I did not know that the reasons, reasons why it was actually a book. Um it's interesting to learn. Thank you so much for your uh, suggestion. We actually have a suggestion by one of our test takers here. Uh Virender Chahal has suggested Sapiens and Homo Deus. Deus. uh by Mr. You will know Harari. Um again if you have a little more like uh if you could give us a synopsis in the comments below it would help us but also our other test takers who are watching but thank you so much for your suggestion. Okay, we're going to Did I get the ball? No, I missed Lauren. I'm sorry. Uh what was your book suggestion? Um my book suggestion was A Wrinkle in Time by uh Madeline Langle and This is a book that um won a lot of awards for um literature like child children literature so it is written um for children uh but it is still a novel that is really interesting to read as an adult um it was something that i read as a kid but i keep reading over and over throughout my life and it was one of my first introductions to the genre of science fiction So it's very interesting. Um it involves time travel. It involves discussing dystopian societies and, you know, 
uh, other planets and like what society could look like other than ours. And it's just a really great way to um, expand your imagination. I'm going to ask you this question. Did you like the movie? You know, I actually didn't really like the movie. I think the problem is, like you guys have said, when you read books, sometimes you become so attached to them and the way you imagine the world and the characters uh, become so close to your heart that when you watch a movie, you end up feeling like you've been uh, a little bit ripped off. <laughs> you feel like you just need it so much more. So I did watch the movie, um, and it was, it was a little too, I don't know, cheesy for me. <laughs> But, uh, I don't know, when I, when I read this book, I think about it in such a more serious manner. I'm always thinking, like, about just the, what, what does time mean? And I get maybe a bit too philosophical about it. Oh, I understand what you're saying. So the book was more serious in a way, and the movie was trying to make it a little too child-friendly. Yeah, I guess, I guess it is a children's book, so I need to lower my expectations a bit. <laughs> But uh, I think it is a good book in that case for learning English, like we said, because um, you're going to get a bit more of simple English because it's written for children, but it's still such an interesting story that as an adult, I think you'll really get caught up in the story and the world and the characters. It's amazing. Um, I do want to say that uh, this reminds me, if any of you are in Vancouver, uh, the Vancouver Library provides digital access to all these books. So I would encourage you to go check that out. Uh, we will also be listing all our suggestions in the comments below. So please wait for the session uh, to finish and then you will be able to get all the information you need. Okay, moving on, we're gonna go to our next round and see what the wheel has for us. Okay, another interesting media. I'm so glad. Like, I only discovered part, not discovered. I only started using podcasts like a year year ago. So for me, I have a lot of podcasts that I'm listening to. So I'm excited for this round. But I am gonna let Lauren start. Ooh, okay. Um, the first podcast that comes to mind is a podcast called Serial, and I've only listened to season one, but each season covers a different true crime case. And so the first season covers a true crime case with a high school senior um, and another high school senior that a lot of people thought it might be a wrongful conviction. And so you listen to this entire podcast and you get um, all these different clues and they open up all these different um, aspects of the case that kind of make you really question what really happened it is so addicting uh you just end up having to listen listening to it from the first episode all the way to the end i ended up taking a road trip from vancouver to edmonton which is quite a long drive and uh, i ended up listening to this podcast the entire way and it made the drive so much faster because i was just so interested to know what happened and it still plagues me sometimes. I am up at the middle of the night thinking, what happened to these high school seniors? <laughs> the thing with, so I watch a lot, even though it's not one of my examples today, I do watch a lot of like true crime podcasts. And the way I cope with it is that a lot of these are set in the United States. Mm. And I am not in the United States. And that's how I'm, you know, because sometimes, uh, if I think too much about it, then I think about it at night and then it, I have issues. So me just thinking that, oh, you know, this is somewhere else in some other country. It's not probably going to happen here. That helps me cope. I think we've actually talked about true crime podcasts before. And the ones you were telling me about sounded way too scary for me. I should say I'm actually a bit of a, a scaredy cat when it comes to scary stuff. So I didn't find this podcast too scary. It's actually got much more of a mystery novel feel than anything else. Um, I, I didn't feel too too scared while listening to it. 
That's a good suggestion. Yeah, thank you for that tip. I will check it out then. Okay, thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I'm going to see what Annabella has for us. I think you got us all interested now in the, in the mystery and, <laughs> and everything and crime scenes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I, I prefer to usually listen to things that are more current, like current issues. So the one I would recommend is the NPR, which is basically a public uh, radio network. And there are various topics that you can choose from. So, I mean, there are endless options there. So you could always choose something that you're interested to listen to. But one of the best things about this uh, podcast is that the accents are actually clean and strong. So they enunciate the words properly. So it's usually easier for test takers to understand and listen to. And it makes it easy to follow the, uh, the storyline or the information that is given. And it's also interesting and engaging, so you want to know a little bit more about what's happening. So I would highly recommend that. And even they also use like phrases and expressions that are easy to understand for, you know, just for everyday use. So again, I'm sorry, I'm always like the teacher here. So I'm just thinking about how it would benefit uh, test takers and listeners if they're trying to improve their vocabulary or learn something new all the time. No, that's a really good suggestion because I was going to say um, I used to listen to NPR every morning and it had such a comic, even though the news was not what specifically comic, right. but, <laughs> but the voice was very calming and, you know, I was able to take in all the bad news in a nice way. So yeah, I And they have voice. such great speakers there. So I love their voices and just listening to them. I do agree. It's very calming. <laughs> okay. So my example is... So Annabella talked about current examples. Uh, Lauren talked about crime. Mine is not crime. Mine is called The Revisionist History, which is also by Malcolm Gladwell. And uh, Lauren was talking about Malcolm Gladwell's book. Malcolm Gladwell is actually Canadian-British, I think, or just Canadian. Um, so this, uh, so a lot of his conversation is in Canadian accent. And this Revisionist History ep- series is about him going back in history and reviewing things in a new perspective. So it really gives you a good idea of like what happened before and how uh, you can actually think about it in a different way. I would encourage you to check it out. Um, Revisionist History by Malcolm Gladwell. Again, the language used and Malcolm Gladwell's voice is also calming. So you really can listen to the entire thing. I know that some of you might find history a little boring, but the way he says it like really like makes you want to know more. Um, and he talks about different aspects of like... Uh, you know, biases and things like that and how it was completely okay at that time. But if you look at it with the lens we have on today, uh, it'll totally blow your mind. So check it out. Um, and it's a good way to kind of listen to, like, listen to the English language uh, because it's given in, like, a very calming, like, sort of uh, a way of, like, na- uh, like narrative way. So you kind of are really intrigued to know more about it. It's not just two people having a conversation like usual podcasts are. Uh, even though that's really interesting, but for some people, they like to be talked at, so, uh, or like you like to be the listener, so that way this example might be really good for you. Okay, so I think we have all of our examples covered here. I'm going to see what the wheel has for us next. Okay, so we have podcasts again. Uh, hmm. We can still talk about it. Um, and I'm going to start with Annabella this time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, for podcasts again, <laughs> I think I'm going to just sort of repeat myself because, again, because I, I love current uh, day-to-day issues, the one I would recommend is the CBC Canada. So I think the best thing in this case is uh, that... It's more Canadian English, and it has the North American accent, so it's great, especially for listening. And again, it's very similar to the other podcasts where they are very well-spoken, it's easy to understand, and the presenters do a great job of giving us the information, and it also increases the students' vocabulary, so highly recommend it. And they do actually have um, a link for ESL learners. 
So there are podcasts that are uh, shorter clips and easier to understand. So if you're just starting off, then I would highly recommend that. And I'll, I'll let you know afterwards what the link is, but it, it's quite, quite good. Um, actually, one of our test takers here, Virinder Chahal again, suggested um, Steve Patterson's The Debater, which is actually a podcast on CBC, uh, on CBC Listen. So I just wanted yeah. to share that here as you spoke about CBC. Yeah, they have great topics there. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and give my suggestion next. Um, I, was gonna, I was going to suggest the Classic Tales podcast by BJ Harrison. It is no surprise that this is a classic, like, this is storytelling, essentially, like, I'm used to storytelling as a kid because my grandmother used to always tell me stories before I went to sleep, so this podcast is, like, personally, I really like it because um, it's just one person, but uh, he kind of um, adopts an accent and adopts, like, he modifies his voice to suit the character he's, uh, he's uh, talking about, or he's, like, whose dialogue he's repeating, Um and the reason I like this podcast is because, again, similar to like reading a book, when you just listen to something, you don't, you're not watching it. So you, you're not employing your eyes. You're completely only employing your ears. So you have to really pay attention to what they're saying. And you have to pick up on words because you know that that is going to come in the end, at the end of the story. They have really good tales. They have Agatha Christie, which is no surprise why I like it. Uh, but they also have uh, Edgar Allan Poe. They have P.J. Woodhouse. Um, and he also breaks it down in different series because these books are long. So, you know, one full book can range between like seven to eight episodes. And he's ever so careful in like enunciating and being clear. For example, with Agatha Christie, um, one of the one of the very popular characters in Agatha Christie is actually a European uh, detective uh, called Poirot. And so, when he talks, when he talks as Poirot, he develops an accent like an East European accent but it's still very very clear to understand so this for me at least it really helps me kind of like pick up on accents and pick up on different languages and pick up on different like pronunciations um it's something that will help you during listening as well in general so that is my suggestion please check it out uh the classic tales podcast by bj harrison okay no uh, we still have Lauren. Lauren, what was your suggestion? Uh, so my next suggestion is a lot more casual. Uh, it's not true crime this time. It's very light and fluffy, and it's the What We Said podcast. And it's just two best friends. They're in their 20-somethings, um, and they just chat about all different kind of easy life topics. Sometimes it's first kisses. Sometimes it's coworker stories. Um, it's great because it, it's just like background chatter. It feels like you just have a couple of friends sitting in the room uh, having a conversation with you. And as far as learning English goes, whenever I've tried learning a new language, I'm usually really good at being able to pick up the reading and writing because I might be studying on my own. But sometimes I have a harder time uh, engaging in conversation if I don't have a bunch of people to practice with around me. And so sometimes it's nice to just listen to people having an everyday conversation at like an everyday speed of conversation so I can get more used to listening to how people converse. Um, but at least for me, that's always been kind of a harder skill for me to learn when learning a new language. And so I think it's nice to just listen to two friends talk about pleasant stuff. Yeah, no, that's a really good uh Thing because um, I know that we're not like I gave my example, but um, one one of the crime podcasts that I watch is um, called and that's why we drink, which apart from the crime is about two best friends talking to each other, and I really enjoy their the rapport that they share. Um, it really reminds me of the time that I used to spend with my friends. Um, so yeah, I get where you're coming from, and that's a really good example. So thank you. Um, I also want to remind you guys that we're open to suggestions, so please go ahead and give your podcast books to me suggestions below, and please like this video if you found this useful. Um, we are going to go uh, into our round seven and see what the wheel has for us. Good 
Greetings again. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask Lauren this time because it's only fair that the best example goes once, uh, goes to the front. So, Lauren. Okay. This is going to come to no surprise to <laughs> anyone who heard my first suggestion of Skyrim. My second suggestion is also another RPG video game. <laughs> Um, I just think RPG video games are really good for learning English, and also they're just a really fun game to play, um, especially if you do have a, some time on your hands, maybe with quarantine. Uh, because the second suggestion I have is Zelda. This one is only a Nintendo one. It's Zelda Breath of the Wild. And it will... I don't know how many hours you could play this game, maybe... 200 hours but it's going to be 200 hours of you having lots of conversations with people along the way in your journey so it's a lot of fun also you can ride horses in this game that doesn't help your english language skills but i just think any game where i can ride horses <laughs> it's a fun game so <laughs> that's my suggestion sounds great um i actually well me i didn't but we do have like a switch in the house right now so maybe I will try it out and see where it leads. Uh, but thank you for your suggestion. Uh, Annabella, did you have a suggestion for us? I'm always leaning towards, I think, board games and, and more <laughs> interactive things. Um, actually, my husband's trying to get me to do more video game playing, so maybe I'll get there soon enough. <laughs> but uh, my recommendation would be charades. Again, this one's it's very similar to Pictionary, but it uses more actions to communicate and you have to do like silly things. And, and if you're trying to improve your vocabulary, this is great. And usually I would recommend in these cases to use either uh, like verbs or to use phrases. You could always do like uh, titles of movies or titles of songs. And again, you have like three minutes to guess the words and it's divided into two teams. It's, it's quite simple to play. But if you're doing Zoom, I would highly recommend that one because <laughs> it's fun to do with so many people and just acting out silly things usually is very pleasurable too. <laughs> Actually, Shreyas is one of my favorite board games um, because I like to like emote and act and make sure that people are able to guess what I'm say, uh, what I'm trying to say. Um, so thank you for that. Yeah, um, you can be silly too if you need to. <laughs> I mean, yes, usually, sorry, whether it, it is needed or not. Um, anyway, so um, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to continue my suggestion after Annabella's because it's in the same wing. It's not a board game, but it's, uh, I'm talking about newspaper crosswords. Um, sorry, uh, I think I was mute there. I know that we don't use newspapers anymore, or, but if you do, um, and even if you don't, you can access crosswords online. Um, but it's a great way to uh, keep uh, your mind running and guessing for, like, words. A lot of crosswords talk about, like, current situations. So, so like, there are a lot of... That's why uh, I meant the newspapers, because it involves, like, current news and things like that. But it also has a lot of um, vocabulary-intensive questions. So they're always asking you uh, the meaning of something, and then the answer is maybe five across, maybe one down. So that, that exercises your brain uh, in terms of English. So I would encourage you to try that out. Um, if you have newspapers lying around, you can certainly see um, how it works, you know, one morning when you're having breakfast. And it's nothing that you have to finish it at the moment. It's a game that you can prolong as much as you want. Um, but I do encourage you to, to be fair, like don't Google answers and like, you know, try to see if you can answer them right. It's kind of, sometimes it's hard for me. Um, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to knock it out of the park. Um, so I think that completes our games round. Um, do we want to go to our last round? I think we do. Let's see what the wheel has for us. Okay, so our last round is TV shows, um, and I know that one of you suggested Big Bang Theory, which was on my list. Uh, the only reason that I was not talking about it is because I want to kind of focus on like comedian shows, but Big Bang Theory is a good suggestion, so thank you. Um, I'm going to start with Anna this time. This is me. 
actually am a huge Big Bang Theory fan. I actually subscribe, uh, I believe it's Crave, only because I want to show Big Bang, uh, I want to see Big Bang Theory. But uh, to be honest, as an English learner, I only recommend that show to a more advanced uh, English proficiency, proficiency level because I do realize that they talk about science and uh, pop cultures a lot. So if you're more like a uh, entry, well, not entry level, like in the beginner level, you may find lost if you don't have your uh, your own language subtitle. But that's just my, just my two cents. So now I'm going to recommend my second TV show. Uh, it's called Kim's Convenient. And again, it's Canadian, like super Canadian. It's made by CBC, and it talks about a Canadian, uh, Korean Canadian family who runs a convenience store in the most part neighborhood of Toronto. So, me myself as a immigrant, I feel quite attached when I watch a show like this because it does talk about the daily life of immigrant family. And it's actually not just about the the Korean Canadian uh, community. Actually, they they talk about other. Uh, Minority group as well, so I highly recommend this show if you want to learn more about uh, the immigrant immigrant uh, life in Toronto, in Canada. Thank you. I actually saw the trailer to that, and I thought it was really funny. And also the the the, the way that the father or the, the shop owner talks it's so similar to my grandfather talking. Like like in English, he doesn't complete sentences. Like instead of saying what is it, he just says what is. Which is so something that I saw that even the shop owner does, and it just like hit home for me. Um, and then I was missing my granddad, so <laughs> thank you for that suggestion. Um, let's see what Annabella has for us. Well, that's a, a great show that, she, that Anna just mentioned. Uh, I think even before it became a series, I, I went to see it in the theater, and it was so funny. It was just such a delight to hear these like mistakes that people make and. In, in every culture, I think my parents, mm-hmm. coming from a Spanish background, do the same. So it, it was it was really nice, and it always hits home as well. It was you know, a movie. It was a in, mm-hmm. no, not a movie theater. So it was just live a live performance. Oh, of that. yeah. And they had that in Toronto, so I actually went to see it, and it was fun. But this was a, a few years back now. So <laughs> oh, that's nice. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. So and, was, yeah. oh, the one I was going to just recommend was the Umbrella Academy. So if there are people, which I'm sure there are, and this is on Netflix too, because I think I'm more of a Netflix fan than anything, but uh, if you like superheroes or comics, then this would be a great show to watch. Uh, a lot of this, actually, the English is pretty simple to understand, and um, one of the things that I thought was that... Uh, their, their grammar, they don't, they actually don't, uh, they use correct English grammar in this, which was surprising to see, but it's great for, you know, conversational English, if people want to improve their English, this is fantastic to watch. And they obviously, they have their super villains and their heroes, so it's quite uh, enjoying to watch that. <laughs> I, I think I've seen those shows. I'm also on Netflix all the time, so I'm making a note of all these shows to watch after I finish mine. Uh, but before I talk about mine, I'm going to let Lauren go next. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I am suggesting New Girl. It's another sitcom. New Girl is just super funny. I've actually watched the series a few times. Um, it. I don't have much to say about it other than it's funny. Uh I, I do think um, that when I have tried learning a new language, the aspect of like jokes and joking is definitely the hardest part to pick up on. So that's something I'm always a bit aware of. Like, but I think it's fun to see how uh, people joke in another language, and it is like a very lighthearted show. It's just a lot of goofy times and something that's really fun to watch. I also definitely have to second Kim's Convenience Store. I recently watched through all of that, and it was just an excellent show. And I also get a little bit, you know, of that pride when I see a Canadian show that's just really packing punches and really funny and and such a high quality. Yeah. Um, I agree with you on Kim's Convenience, but I also agree with you on New Girl, um, just because I really like uh, the character, like the way the character is developed, and it's just the fact that they're living, because we've all done that, we lived with roommates and, you know, all the shenanigans we get up to, um, so I like your, I like all the suggestions here, thank you so much. 
I am going to end it with another Canadian show, which is written by Canadians, has a lot of Canadian actors, and is also shot in Canada. It's called Shit's Creek. Um, S-C-H-I-T-D, Shit's Creek. Um, it's a show about, it's a, it's an interesting show. It's really funny, um, and it's a, it's a comedy show, but it's more about, like, um, family and how you, how it is to be in a modern family um, and the things that go on with that. So if you're interested in things like that, this would be a good show. Um, and I like it especially because, uh, like I said, it's really funny, but also because it has so many uh, Canadian actors that I recognize and I feel proud of. Um, but in terms of English, um, one of the characters there, who is the mother in that family, Moira, is a character's name. Um, she used to be an actor. So this, this series is about how a really rich and wealthy family lost all their money due to some tax fraud and are now living in a poor town called Schitt's Creek. But really, they haven't really left their the way they behave and the way they dress and the way they were living uh, when they were rich. So one of the actors that seems to not be able to deal with that reality is the mother, who is Moira, like I said, who used to be an actor. So a lot of her dialogues are very, very vocabulary intensive and are very like formal. Uh, to say simple things like, you know, I feel bad or I'm sorry, she would not say it in a straight way. And it's really funny to listen. But also, if you really think about it, it's grammatically correct. Um, for example, if I'm just saying, telling somebody that I'm sorry they had a bad breakup or that they had, had to go through this, you know, bad breakup with their uh, boyfriend or girlfriend, she would say something like, I'm sorry, your relationship oxidized. So, you know, nobody thinks of these things. But they are, if you think about it, they are kind of correct. So, you know, I would encourage you to watch that just because, just to see her vocabulary and see all the words she used. I've learned a lot of words from her. Um, I learned what petty fogging is, which is, petty fogging is, just means people holding on to petty mistakes just to win over somebody in an argument. I didn't know there was a word for this, uh, and I do now. So, you know, it really helped me. Um, I would encourage you to watch that. It's on Netflix, and... Uh, I think they finished the series, so there are like six seasons, um, and it's all really funny, so totally encouraging you to watch that, and then I think with that, we have ended to, uh, we have ended our segment here, and I'm, I'm hoping you enjoyed it. These people are going to be with me until I finish the closing statement, so thank you so much for hanging tight. Um, I will make sure that I get through the closing statements quickly, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys, and if you have suggestions on TV, uh, series, books, podcasts, please comment below, games as well. Um, and please, if you find this video useful, do share it with people you think might find it useful as well, and do like uh, our video if you found it useful. Anyway, um, we're going to talk about what's coming on Tuesday. So like I said, this was an experimental video, but we are back to proper self test content on Tuesday, which is the 28th. Brandy and Megan will be joining us and they will be talking to us about response analysis. Now, I know that many of you have asked us about response analysis and want to understand what it means to have different answers and for different levels. So Brandy and Megan will be talking to us, uh, especially for speaking, um, for speaking tests and what that means in terms of like uh, a level eight and a level nine. So I do encourage you to come and check that out. Uh, it's on two, uh, it's on 28, uh, and we will be going uh, in, in an in-depth uh, analysis of how responses differ between those two levels. Um, so we will see you then. Make sure you have your questions ready for us. We will be taking any questions about the self test and this time about response analysis. So you can send in your video questions to us at communications at paragontesting.ca or use any of our social media channels. All important updates will be posted first on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, you can see the icons here uh, on the screen. So please uh, consider following uh, us on Instagram um, and you will be updated with the latest information. But as, I, as always, I thank you for being here and I ask that you subscribe to our channel and like our video if you found it useful. Um, if you think that it somebody else will find it useful, please do not hesitate to share this episode with them. Uh, this series was made for you all, so please go ahead and give your suggestions on what you'd like to see next, as well as if you liked this video. Um, but until next Tuesday, I thank you all for joining us. Please wash your hands and stay safe. Bye.